riders out there? Any riders? Well, if I have some riders in the crowd, I, I want to let you in on a little something. Oh, <laughs> didn't introduce myself. By the way, my name's Beatrice Beginning, and I just want to talk to you a little bit about how my great hobby of fishing that I enjoy so very much, how it kind of connects with writing. Now, do you ever think that your writing just isn't the big enough, big enough? It just is kind of looked over? Well, for example, like this little fella right here. He's small. We don't really pay much attention to him. Do you want your writing to be like that? Small, looked over, not really paid much attention to? Well, ladies and gentlemen, I have a trick to help you out. And it's called starting off your beginning nice and strong. That'll help your writing not get be so small and get looked over. The way we should start our writing is kind of like with a, I don't know, a, aha, a hook. You want to hook your readers and get them interested in what you're writing about. You want to bring the readers into your writing. But you might be thinking to yourself, now, Beatrice, how can I do such a thing? Well, let me tell you. There's a couple of ways you can do it, and today we're going to talk about three specific ways. One way to really hook your readers into your writing is to start off your writing by asking a question. Not, do you like the color purple? Let me tell you a story about the color purple. Now, that's still too boring and that might get looked over. But something about, have you ever visited a place with palm trees and sunny skies? A place that's around 75 degrees all the time? Right there, I started off with the question and I have my readers hooked. They want to know what place I'm talking about. Another way that you could start by getting your readers interested in your writing is a question, but also another way is a sound effect. That's one way that I really like. When I tell my buddies my fishing tales, I always like to use sound effects like blub blub, blub dub, those kind of things to start off my writing, make my, the listeners and the readers that are listening want to know what you're going to be talking about. Why does it say splish splash? Why does it say kaboom? They want to know more and you've automatically hooked your readers. There's another final way, boys and girls, that we're going to talk about today, and that is adding some action. Action to the very beginning of the story. And no, I don't mean every story has to start by saying lights, camera, action. Not the word action, but can you create a problem right at the beginning? Do you have some sort of action at the beginning of your story that's going to hook your readers? How can you portray action in your writing? You want to do this because you want to keep your readers interested in what you're about to say. Now, we talked about three different ways. Starting off your writing with questions, sound effects, and action. Are you able to start those in your story? You're going to get to practice today. But there's one thing. If I'm Beatrice Beginnings, the story doesn't start and end with me. I have to reel in a good old friend to help me out. And there's something I want you to know. Whenever you start your story with a hook, with the beginning, you might want to think about ending your story the same way so your readers feel like the story flows and has some organization. Just like this little feller over here, you don't want your story to go unnoticed. So how, think about it, how can you make your story big and hook those readers? Don't forget my good friend here. At the end.